Today is Pink Shirt Day, a day dedicated to the prevention of bullying across the country from physical to psychological and cyberbullying. Bullying can affect a person's feelings, relationships, self-esteem and sense of safety. But what if you're a bystander and a witness to abuse or the parent of a bully? Bullying prevention expert Kika Dasgupta and Veronica Stopa from Kids Help Phone join us now this morning with some great advice for everybody involved. Here. Thank you very Thank much you for, for joining us here. this morning. Thanks for having us. Can we start with this staggering statistic? Uh, Canada has the ninth highest rate of bullying in the 13-year-olds. Keika, this is staggering. You go to schools and have workshops to prevent this very thing. Yes. So you must yeah. see a lot of this and hear a lot of this. I see a lot of this, and I think one of the biggest challenges is that students today have so much that they're covering and trying to you know, deal with social pressures and whatnot, and we have a self-worth crisis that's happening. So quite often I think that we have to look at each other and take care of each other because students are under so much pressure. We have to be able to find the confidence in ourselves to not only help ourselves but help the people around us too. How do we do that if we're, if we're so wrapped up in everything that's going on in life? How do we... How do we find the time to help people? So I think, you know, one of the key things is uh, when we look at gratitude, empathy, what's something I call quiet leadership, which is like it could be sending a text to somebody and saying, you know what, I feel like you've had a bad day. I'm here for you. When we pay that gratitude forward, uh, when we look at the people in our classroom who might be sitting alone, who might be struggling, and just going and approaching them before problems start, we can have an incredible impact. So each and every single one of us can have that impact. So much of the work that I do is focused on getting kids to just become aware of their own power. So I, I did a TEDx uh, talk about gratitude and the impact that that has when we not just practice it on our own, but when we actually tell somebody like, do you know when you did this for me the other day, it made all the difference for me. Thank you so much. The reaction that we get from each other can really help an environment in schools. Not to be a silent bystander, you can actually reach out. Yeah. Veronica, you hear some incredible stories. You are such a good, strong spirit to be able to <laughs> be there for so many with Kids Help Phone. What advice would you give? Because oftentimes it's that whole mentality of as long as I'm not getting picked on, I might just join this little circle over here yeah. and participate. Mm -hmm. So what advice do you give? Well, we talk about communication. So if you are experiencing bullying, if you are doing the bullying, if you are a witness to bullying, talk to someone. So that's what we're here for primarily at Kids Help Phone, um, is a safe place for young people to call and talk about it. There's so much fear and shame around bullying, right? Bullies try and keep young people scared to talk. So we want you to communicate. So who are your safe people in your lives? Could be a friend, could be a teacher, a parent, a trusting adult, someone. Tell someone what's going on. Start to communicate. If you witness bullying, talk to that person. Are you okay? Do you want some help? Can I walk you to class? Yeah. You know, just having that, that creation of community uh, and empathy and, and, and making sure we're all safe. What about the, we were talking about this before, what about the bully themselves? How do you reach out? Because you're helping the person who's being bullied, but you're not solving the problem necessarily mm -hmm. because that person will still be a bully. How do you change them? What can you do to help them? Again, it's, you know, that empathy and care for them. So someone who is bullying another person is going through something themselves and they are silent. Many, many people who bully others have been bullied themselves. And this is something we don't talk about, right? We see them as a, a villain. But really, there's someone who needs care and support and love. So if you're a parent uh, and you're a parent of a, a child who is a bully, talk to them. What is going on for them emotionally that they need some help with, that they are not expressing in a healthy way and it's coming out mm -hmm. in bullying? And as parents, we talk about modeling behaviors. What sorts of things can parents be more aware of to help this problem? So I think the number one thing is that we want to talk about bullying and conversations around that on an ongoing basis. We don't have to wait until something happens. I think that too often we treat bullying as an, an acute issue that's between the bully and that person who's bullied, but it's actually collective. So as parents, when kids come home, we'll often say, you know, how was your day at school? What did you do? But we can ask other questions, like if you felt like you were going to be bullied or you might be bullied, what will you do? If you see somebody being bullied, what could you do? Yeah. And then that opens up the conversation. We know that that if a bystander stands up and becomes an upstander within the first 10 seconds of bullying happening, 57% of the time the bullying dissipates. Yeah. So it doesn't take care of the problem immediately, but we can have more conversation around mm -hmm. it. And parents can also model that. So, you know, children, youth, we, we watch each other. <laughs> and so if you have a story from school, from work, for example, where somebody's been bullied and you've stood up and you've said something and said, hey, you know what, that's not really cool, share it with your kids because they're going to learn through example. We have to really walk the talk as adults yeah. to be able to talk to kids like that. And 
when we have those conversations on an ongoing basis, then when a child or a youth teenager experiences something at school, they're going to remember that conversation. It doesn't feel completely unfamiliar, and you know they're going to be able to say, okay, you know what, I'm going to do something about it. Before we go, I just want to get in, Veronica, what kind of calls are you getting? Has it changed over the last few years? Have you seen a change in what people are concerned about the kids when they're calling? Yeah, we've seen, I mean, the, the problems young people are calling with are so much more complicated nowadays. They're multifaceted, right? So before, let's say, a kid called to talk about bullying, it was just about bullying. Now it opens up this huge world of, um, you know, mental health, anxiety, uh, depression, uh, problems in relationships and communication, social media effects, mm. all of these things. So. It's, it's not a singular problem. Young people are calling with really complex issues mm -hmm. and taking the time to sort that out and break it apart and giving them that space to do so. Veronica Kika, thank you so much. This is thank amazing. We're getting the conversation started. Mm -hmm. Keep it going and be that upstander. For more information, breakfasttelevision.ca. Coming up, we have a 10-year-old who is sure to inspire you how she overcame bullying. Her name is Ariella, and she's up right after this.